Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I decided to make a video because I have received a lot of messages, a lot of comments, a lot of concerns, um, basically from people who are distraught about the current state of the election, all the fraud that's taking place, obviously, all of the corruption that's taking place, obviously, all the propaganda that's taking place, obviously. Um, and at first, to do this address, I was going to ask my documentarian to hire a professional cameraman, and I was going to get dressed up, and I was going to get nice, and um, I decided not to, because I wanted to make this address um, as authentic as possible, and I wanted to do it, I wanted to, to make this address in the way that we all became acquainted, in the back of my, in the, in the seat of, driver's seat of my car, um, with my iPhone, because it seems that these are the type of people who have been driving this political revolution that Bernie Sanders just started. Those with with nothing left to lose, those with nothing, nothing more to gain than their dignity, and those who don't sit at the front chair of the board table or sit on the committees of of uh, of, of major foundations and non-profit non-profit organizations making millions of dollars wearing suits and ties wearing expensive watches those aren't the people that have made up this this political revolution and so i didn't want to come to you as one of those i wanted to come to you how we became acquainted and that is as one of you all as a normal person that has nothing left to lose and everything to gain What you all have to realize is, I made a promise when I made my first video exposing the corruption in North Carolina. This will not be the election that democracy dies. I still 100% believe that Bernie Sanders will win this election. Um, but I am also very much aware that, ladies and gentlemen, we are at war. And although this war is not physical, it is one based off of media and propaganda, we are still at war nonetheless. Unfortunately, in these wars, when people get scared, when people feel that their cause is too great for an enemy too powerful, they switch sides. It's, it's, it's historical. It's always happened. That does not mean, however, that your cause is unnecessary, and it does not mean, however, that your cause should not be unwavering. Your efforts should be as as potent as it has ever been at this point because now this is where people want to give up this is the point where people fit, try to understand why they were even putting so much energy and effort into something they feel is so impossible this ladies and gentlemen is where you must start fighting the hardest this is where you swallow your pride this is where Yes, we had a lot of points in the election cycle that we could cheer and we could jeer and we could be excited because we saw momentum, but now our momentum has stopped. And we're pushing uphill. And in order to get uphill, in order to push Bernie uphill, we have to join our efforts because an uphill battle is just that, one that requires effort. That is not the norm. We have to band together and we have to push Bernie up this hill and we have to put this push this revolution up this hill. I am not mad at anyone who decides to switch sides to Hillary because unfortunately the world does not have convictions and fear mongering has been known to work whether a person is intelligent or not. Fear mongering works. People want jobs. People were scared or else people like Trump and Hillary would not even be close to being Presidents, these are real problems that people fear every day, and that is how fear-mongering has been used in American society. But ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is that this war is not over. Remember, during the American Revolution, right before America won, the United States won, well, at the time were the colonies, but whenever before they won, they thought that they were on the brink of destruction. They thought they were going to lose because the king, his army, his money, the establishment, the people that switched over had all been deemed and thought of to be too powerful. How could you beat an entire country with just a few colony, a few colony members and some untrained, unseasoned soldiers? 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, despite what you believe, just like them, we have the advantage because we have nothing left to lose. You have nothing left to, left to lose by fighting. And moreover, we have the upcoming generations who also feel the exact same way we do. However, maybe under the dominion of their parents or aren't 18 yet and can't participate as politically and as they want to. These college institutions, although they are expensive, more and more people are going to college. More and more people are getting their law degree. More and more people are becoming educated. Information has become more abundant and more available than ever than ever before. Although Hillary was able to rig this particular election, I guarantee before the next election even starts, people will be putting things and putting mechanisms into place to ensure that their voices are heard long before the election process starts again. We are the 46% and it may be even more than that are independent in this country, which means we know the two party system is on the brink of failure. And although Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump may win this election, there is that's there's still that possibility. If there's a possibility for Bernie to win, there's still a possibility for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to win. Although they may win this election, they could tear this country down while everything looks good on paper. And all that will do is motivate people even more because maybe just maybe people need to see and be aware of the proof of what the establishment has done to this country and what the establishment has done to the world because now they can't hide. Everything Hillary's done in the past has come out. So don't you think, ladies and gentlemen, that every single thing she does, if she becomes a presidency, will be under a magnifying glass. So that means the next election where a progressive candidate can run. Everything Hillary has done will be exposed. And yes, at this very moment in time, there is the optimism that Hillary Clinton, because of that magnifying glass, could end up somehow doing what's right. But let's be very, very clear, ladies and gentlemen, she's an advocate for TPP. She's an advocate for fracking. And P these people are paying her. So although she's very good, at hiding from that magnifying glass, eventually, uh, I believe the phrase is the chickens will come to roost and people are going to want what they pay for. And finally, as this is happening, those who supported her, those who switched over to the establishment will finally realize there is no such thing as, as a, a donation, as a, uh, what we call it, charity when it comes to politics. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this will not be the election that democracy dies. And we right now have the clear advantage. We have the information available. We have the people who are on fire. We have the youth and the next generation. They have the money and right now they have the power. But money and power is only temporary. Eventually they get old. They're, they get old, they die. A new cycle starts. And there are people like me. There are people like H.A. Goodman. There are people like uh, the same there are organizations like the same progressive, like the, the Young Turks. Like, you know, there, there are people that every day this is what they fight for. And now because of Bernie Sanders and what the message he preaches, they're finally getting heard. The, ter the Young Turks are going to be on television. H.A. Goodman has been on, you know, on, on, a, on ma mainstream media programs more than ever before. I mean, I've been featured in things and I've been asked to go on TV and I have a document because these issues are potent. We are in control. That is why they are scrambling. That's why Hillary called, they tried to plan for Hillary to win before we got to the convention because they know how powerful we are. And if you think we are losing this war, the ladies and gentlemen, why are they up in arms trying to drop a nuclear weapon right before we're about to win it? The bulb shines brightest right before it's about to burn out. And oh, ladies and gentlemen, best believe, by the time that convention comes, that light bulb will burn. <laughs> All puns intended. So don't give up. We're in control.
I know it's hard, I know it's frustrating, but like I said, whenever the moral thing to do is inconvenient, that is when we are supposed to fight for that morality more than ever, because that is when it is most important. Feel free to message me if you want to have a conversation. It takes a while for me to respond because I have a lot of messages, but I try to respond, you know, as quickly as possible. I've been at work recently, and I've been doing a lot of, you know, I'm preparing for exams myself, and I have my own personal life, ladies and gentlemen. I understand all of you do as well. But at the same time, my personal life doesn't mean much. If I'm living in a country, no, I know it's controlled by people who do not want to see the best for us. And like many of you, my drive isn't one that's personal. My drive isn't one that's self-righteous. My drive isn't one that's self-endearing. The only reason I fight this hard is because I see everyone else around me. I see people laying on the street. I see my veteran brothers and sisters passing away, leaving the military with no job, leaving the military and, and, and being insulted because they fought in a war, not because they believe in it, but because they have to support their family because after high school, they fear going into debt. They fear being crippled by this ridiculous college debt. They fear being crippled by a minimum wage that's completely unlivable. So I don't fight because I need the help. Because fortunately enough for me, although I had to struggle a lot when I was a child and my family struggled a lot, I've been blessed to have the people around me to put me in the right positions at the right time. However, not everybody is like that. And until everyone has that opportunity, until everyone has the opportunity to be their definition of what they find define as successful, I will continue to fight. I will continue to carry Bernie's message. And I will continue to be a speaker piece for those who cannot speak for themselves. And I hope that all of you continue to do the same. It is burning your bus, not because we have the privilege to, but because we have absolutely nothing else left to lose. See you in Philly.